Hello there and welcome to launch on this Friday, December 18th. Wonderful to be with you. Let's begin our time today with a question. What did Gideon ask God to do in order to test God's will for his life? What did Gideon ask God to do to make sure that God really wanted him to rule? The answer in a few moments. Now for something a little bit funny, what kind of running means you will have to walk? Running out of gas. Been there, done that. Now let's launch into our passage. It comes from Mark 10, 1 through 16. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan, Again, crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law. Jesus replied, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Now, this is a tough teaching. It's a tough passage. And Mark does not record any condition for divorce. The way he puts it, it's flat out wrong. But we do have Matthew and Luke, and in both of those Gospels, there is a condition for proper divorce. That is in the case of marital unfaithfulness. Now, the word there in the Greek applies to every sort of sexual sin. Now, we could have a long discussion about the broadness of that or the narrowness of that, uh, all that it might entail. But suffice it to say that the other two Gospels, Matthew and Luke, do record a condition for divorce. Now, my seminary professor in teaching on this passage made a point that I've found very helpful and I think very true. He said, what if God did not intend for two to be together? In that case, perhaps it's better that they separate or divorce, particularly in the case of abuse, uh, extreme neglect, or some other sort of very bad situation which causes harm to someone. So in that case, my professor said, there may be indeed a reason beyond even what the scriptural points would be based on the fact that Jesus said, for what God intended, let man not separate. If indeed God did intend, that certainly would make sense. If he didn't intend it, perhaps that would make sense too. Maybe that helps a little bit in trying to figure out this particular passage. Now, if we separate that which God intends to be together, that can be very painful, not to minimize divorce for other reasons, but certainly divorce of any kind is painful especially if the two were meant to be together, to, to take apart that which is one uh, relieves, uh, I, I mean, actually um, brings collateral damage. And we might admit that perhaps that's often true in the case 
of children. It can be very tough on them. And once again, not easy under any circumstance, but if God intends and we go a different direction, there might be fallout that we did not intend. But the good news is this, God forgives. When we do something apart from his will, because God is full of mercy and grace and love, when we bring it to him, he forgives. There is grace, and that makes all the difference in the world. God forgives and restores and transforms. Jesus ends this dialogue, or at least Mark brings this into play here, with a discussion about the children. And I think that's in context because our children are our most precious resources. And even if there's separation or divorce, we can still work together in order to train them, to love them, to show them that God is present through it all, regardless of what we go through. Uh, to still be a team for the children's sake is so very important. It comes down to simple trust. That's what children do. They trust simply from the heart. And that's what God asks of us in order to enter his kingdom. Let's trust that way, shall we? And let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your presence, for your forgiveness, for your love, for the restoration that you bring. Continue to move us forward in this life to give you greater glory, to trust you more fully. Lord, give us your peace and protection, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Real quick, what did Gideon do in order to test God's will? He, he put out a fleece, a, a lambskin, and he asked God to make the the lambskin wet with dew and the ground under it dry. And then the next day he reversed that. He asked God to make the lambskin dry and the ground under it wet. And God did indeed do that in both cases to prove that he truly called Gideon to rule. You've heard, out, you've heard the, the words, the expression, put out a fleece, the golden fleece, uh, to test to see if something is God's will. Um, I don't know that I would always suggest us doing that. I think a simple trust is better. But God works in strange and mysterious ways, and we give him all the credit. Take care, God bless, and hope to see you very soon.